Good afternoon from the Water Utilization Learning Center. My name is Brian Olson. I'm out here with Mark Ryman and we're out here on a very cool cloudy day here toward uh, the middle part of August and uh, the corn has been moving along fairly well if you've got water. Obviously this uh, we're standing in front of irrigated corn now uh, but uh, we definitely uh, uh, see some different uh, variations of corn out there in the field. If you've got water, you're doing okay. If you don't have water, there's a lot of corn that's uh, burned up. I was down in southwest uh, uh, Kansas and there was a lot of corn down that way that was having some difficulty, even if it uh, was on some irrigated ground. Uh, and so um, this is a really good time to go out and look at these corn products and see how they've responded to this stress. Uh, unfortunately, we might be entering into a time frame where uh, we're, we're going to see more stress uh, from some dry conditions. So, so it's really good time to evaluate uh, our corn products. And so uh, Mark has went out there and uh, has got two ears of corn to kind of walk through here. Yeah, so just as you mentioned, it's a good time to evaluate how things are going. And kind of one of those things I talked about earlier was pollination. And if you go out and look, you might find some ears... You know, you can kind of find them. This happens to be a little bit on a secondary ear, but if you're out there and you see ears with like some really green silks, um, that might be a really late one out there. And if you peel those ears back, uh, what you're going to find, you know, the silks are still green because we pollinated maybe 10% of the kernels, 5% of the kernels on that ear. So this is a good time, especially I think if you've got a little bit later planted corn, maybe replant after a hail vent hail of it to go out and look at uh, what's happening as far as pollination. Most of what I'm seeing though, you know, for the normal ears is very good pollination overall. You can maybe see a few lighter colored kernels that look a little later. Missed a couple there at the tip, but overall it looks really good. And we're entering that dough stage or R4 of corn. So we've got in that five to seven inches of water use left to go on the crop. And as you mentioned, Brian, it looks like we're gonna have to supply most of that uh, through irrigation. So definitely keep on top of that to prevent some stress out there in the field. Yeah, and so even though, you know, on a day like today, the corn's not using much moisture. It is, uh, you know, obviously we've got the size, but we just don't have the driver such as uh, the sun and, and the heat, but, uh, uh, these cooler temperatures are being observed up here in Nebraska, down into Kansas. I, I think they're a little warmer, and so uh, definitely understanding that uh, in these drier conditions, back to what you're saying, we got to stay on top of that uh, water in order to get that kernel filled out, to get that girth, right, to get that deep kernel set that we like to see uh, out there in the field. And so any other final thoughts, Mark? Well, just as you're going out there, you know, there are some diseases floating around. If I've been picking up a lot of physoderma, so that has a node rot um, phase to it. You know, you might want to check for that. Could be a concern um, as we get closer to harvest time as far as some of those plants snapping off. The other thing is it's a good time to evaluate how did my above ground insect control do? So are you seeing a lot of um, earworm, I haven't seen many of them, but picking up a few earworm in some of the tips, you know, how'd my western bean cutworm control do? Maybe you sprayed for western bean or, you know, kind of what percent of ears are you seeing it in? So it is just a good time overall, kind of to look at that field, see if you find anything that's off about it, uh, try and learn, maybe consult an agronomist about what's going on. And back to the agronomists, I know we, we just had a couple of agronomists uh, uh, from our brands at the Learning Center, and they greatly appreciate getting called out now to talk about uh, some challenges out there in the corn versus trying to go through there and determine what's going on after the corn has been harvested, right? <laughs> so if there are issues, please go out and contact your seed rep, and they will get that agronomist out there to look at that corn instead of trying to determine what's going on in that corn plant after harvest. That's, a, that's, that's much more difficult. And obviously we want our customers to have a great experience uh, with our corn. Uh, definitely been a challenging year, lots of different environments. And so uh, there could have been, uh, back to what Mark's talking about, some challenges at pollination, uh, but the stress coming in at different timings definitely causing some havoc out there uh, with our corn. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, Mark? 
No, I guess not other than just, yeah, as you mentioned, it's a lot easier to figure out what's going wrong now rather than uh, later when you might notice there's a bigger problem in the field. All right. Well, with that, we'll talk to you in the future about other agronomic topics from the Learning Center. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video from the Gothenburg Water Utilization Learning Center. For more information, please call 308-537-4500.